Welcome to the video on the nuts and bolts of phlegology. This uh, talks about rigs, baits, and tactics, what it takes to get the most use out of your flags. It'll include segments on tools and materials, rigs and rigging, baits, and artificials, what we use to sweeten the flags or to at least decorate them. And the last segment will be on presentations and tactics. Now, there'll be lots of homemade lists and diagrams included in here. The good thing about a video is you can pause it at any place to either make notes or to even do a screen capture for future reference. Just a quick review. Flags are basically nothing more than floating jigs. Been around a lot of years. There are quite a few different ones available commercially. I've been making my own for a lot of years and I have some uh, kind of unique sizes and colors and shapes. And out of all the ones I make, these are the ones that typically work the best for me with the type of fishing that I do. They start with the little micro ice jigs for panfish and ice fishing. Tail flags work for just about everything. Ditto for the horty flags on the right with the spinner blades on them. And then we've got the medium, large, and gorillas that are used mostly for large chunks of cut bait, whole minnows or partial minnows. Last but not least, we've got the Kong flags, which are great big 8 aught hooks on extra strong hooks. And these are used for the very biggest catfish and even have been used for sturgeon very successfully. Okay, let's talk about the tools and materials that you need for rigging and fishing your, your flags. First and foremost are clips and scissors. Need leader material variety of sinkers, variety of swivels. Optional would be split rings, beads, and blades. We'll talk about each of those individually. First of all are the line clippers. Uh, they're invaluable for quickly clipping off a lure that you've been using and trimming up the knot on the new one that you retie. It's good to have a retractor. Line clippers can save a lot on your teeth. Scissors are great to have. There's a whole lot of things you can use scissors for, but if you're using braid line, scissors are by far the best for cutting braid as opposed to clippers. You need leader material. Your choice of fluorocarbon or monofilament. Whatever you get, you should get it. Uh, make sure it's good and abrasion resistant because there's a, a lot of wear and tear between the teeth and sticks and rocks down there where you're dragging your flags. You can use almost any kind of sinker uh, to fit the situation that you're fishing. And uh, these are some that I make myself and use. Uh, everything from basic sliding sinkers to uh, flattened bent sinkers. And in the middle is a clothes hanger. I call that my hanger shot rig. And they're easy to make out of a piece of wire. And you can cut them in the appropriate lengths for the, for the weight that you need. The good thing about these things is they go up and over the rocks real easily, or if you've got some weeds, they pull through the weeds without getting hung up a lot. If you're going to be trolling, you'll need some trolling sinkers. Now you can use almost any kind of sinker and swivel combination that you want, but ones with the bead chains on them are a lot better and a lot more resistant to kinking and twisting. They come in several different shapes. Uh, I kind of like either the crescent sinker or the keel sinker. Uh, you won't need these in less than a quarter ounce, and you shouldn't need them in more than a one ounce size. That should cover most of the situations that you'd be trolling. And don't forget the split shot. Split shot are inexpensive. They're easy to put on and take off. And the good news is if you're using them for bottom bouncing or on a dropper, if they get snagged up in the rocks, all you do is put a steady pressure on the line and the split shot will slide off the line and leave you with your with your flag and hopefully if there's a fish attached, your fish will still be there. A variety of swivels is good to have. I like to put a snap swivel on my line up above the main swivel and I use that as, as slide up and down the line and to attach different weight sinkers as needed for the different fishing additions as they change. Three-way swivels are good for tying droppers, uh, three-way rigs, bottom bouncers, a whole lot of, a lot of ways you can use those. Barrel swivels and crane swivels are what most guys use for attaching their main line to the leader rig that goes to the, to the flig. 
but uh, your option, uh, you can use anything you want. Some guys use split rings instead of swivels to connect their line to the leader. That's your option. Uh, doesn't work as well as a swivel and, and it doesn't prevent twist. You can have some beads. Now beads are normally used in making spinners and, and rigs, but some guys like to string a couple of them on ahead of a, ahead of a flag to give it a little extra color and to change the profile a little bit. And if you're going to be using a spinner ahead of your flag that doesn't have a spinner on it, that's a good idea to put a metal blade on between the spinner blade and the knot. That acts as a bearing so the spinner can spin more freely. If you're using spinners, I usually mostly the little propeller blades are inexpensive and the main thing is they spin very rapidly at even just the slightest motion in the water. So you get a lot of action out of them even, even while you're drifting or bottom bouncing uh, slow retrieves. You could also use Colorado blades and they come in a lot of nice fish caching colors. But the downside to these is you've got to be moving pretty fast to get the blades working so they don't work, work good on slow retrieves or drifting. One of the last ones that I'll cover is the Smile Blade. These are synthetic material. Uh, they spin very readily at slow speeds and they come in a lot of nice colors. The bad, bad news is they cost a lot of money. They're pretty spendy. Truth is you can use almost any spinner blade you want and a lot of them will work. So it's good to experiment and try them out once in a while. The fish will let you know what they like. Okay, now let's talk about rigging your flag so that you get the best action, the best presentation, and uh, the most attention from the fish. First of all, uh, you got sliding sinker rigs, got dropper rigs, bottom bouncing and three-way rigs, you know, fish a high-low tandem jig with two jigs, two flags, and a jig flag rig, and then some of the options that you have on sinkers. First of all, the sliding sinker rig is probably the one I use the most. Any sinker will work that will slide up and down the line. Helps to use a bearing bead between that and the, uh, and the swivel so that you don't mess up the knot when the sinker bangs into it. But uh, you can use, again, any type of sinker, belly sinkers, egg sinkers, or whatever. And your length of leader can be optional, so you can use it short or long. This shows a long, uh, shorter leader, 12 inches, <coughs> on a on a perch, they don't need a very long leader because they stay pretty close to the bottom and they're not easily spooked by the sinker being too close to the flag. Some fish do are spooked by the sinker being too close to the flag, so you use a longer leader. And the one advantage of this is if you stop, like if you're drift, drifting or slow trolling or whatever and you stop, the flag will float up higher in the water column and appeal to fish that uh, are orienting uh, more suspended. You can use a dropper rig. Uh, there's actually two kinds of dropper rigs. The first one is with the flag on a short leader up above a longer leader that goes down to the sinker. The next one is using the sinker on a short dropper and the flag on the longer leader. Now both of these work. Uh, it's up to you to experiment around and find out the one that works best for you for the type of fishing that you do and the species of fish that you fish for. Uh, a third type of dropper rig is to use a split shot on the end of the line. And the split shot, again, if it snags in the rocks, you can usually get it free by just putting a steady pressure on the line. That'll leave you with your rig and hopefully with a fish attached. This is an example of a fish that took a dropper on a, sh on a short leader with the longer leader going to the sinker. If you do bottom bouncing, you can use the bottom bouncer rig shown at the bottom. This is favored by a lot of walleye fishermen, but they uh, usually come in a minimum about a one ounce size up to about a three ounce size, so they're heavier. Now, that's good if you're moving fairly quickly because it'll keep you on the bottom a lot better. But if you're fishing shallower water or going a slower speed and don't need the heavier leader, you can rig a three-way rig like at the top using a three-way swivel short length of leader to whatever sinker you're using, and then a longer leader of your choice out to the out to the flig. If you really want to kick it up a notch, instead of putting a sinker on your dropper, uh, substitute that sinker for a plastic or marabou jig. Uh, if you use the right size, it'll still get the flag down. And if you really want to kick it up even more, 
uh, substitute that for either a spinner or a crankbait. The main thing is, is as long as you get deep enough to present the flag along with your other lure, you're giving the fish an option and let them make the choice. You don't really care which one they choose as long as they eat one or the other, right? You can fish two flags at a time with uh, several different kinds of tandem rigs. Now, the one, this one here, where it says barrel swivel, three-way optional, you can use a three-way swivel, or you can just tie a blood knot. Now, down at the bottom, you rig up just like you're using a standard sliding sinker rig, and that puts you in direct contact with the flag, both top and bottom, so you can feel any fish bites. Uh, later length can be whatever you want. Type of flag can be whatever kind you want. Bait can be whatever kind you want. So there's a lot of options, but this at least allows you to present the flag at two different levels in the water column to take advantage of the fact that some fish feed more above the bottom than others. Let's get back and talk about a couple of other sinker options. Uh, we talked about the sliding sinkers, and you could use all different kinds. A couple that I didn't show. Number one was the bent uh, flat sinker. Now, this works kind of like a lindy rig in that it glides up and over the rocks rather than dropping into the cracks. So it's a good one to have. The next one I use a lot of my hanger shot rigs because again these go up and over the rocks fairly easily and pull through the weeds very easily so you you don't get a lot of the temporary incidental slags. This shows uh, the hanger shot rig used as a sliding sinker rig and it works very well. Well, that pretty much covers the rigging. Hope it helps. Okay, let's talk about the sweeteners that you can use to decorate your flags and uh, attract more attention. Essentially, you can use any bait that you might use either plain on a hook or to decorate any other kind of allure. At the top of the list is probably night crawlers, followed by minnows, perch meat, white bass meat, carp meat, if you're an ice fisherman, you can use mealworms and waxworms. If you're strictly a trout fisherman, don't don't be afraid to put a wad of power putty on there. I know a lot of guys at Willard that fish for wipers that actually uh, use, use their mussels, gob of mussels on a flag and do very well on, on wipers and even catch stupid catfish once in a while. First and foremost is a night crawler. Now on a lot of, a lot of flags, just a simple one inch piece of night crawler will work just fine. If you want to hold, use a whole night crawler for uh, walleyes or other fish that want a whole crawler, you can add a stinger hook rig and fish a whole crawler like in the picture. This is a whirly flag with a crawler rig on it. Looks like the fish is hooked on the top on the top hooked, but that was a whole crawler before that walleye chomped on it. Here's a walleye that took a single hook rig with a probably a one inch piece of crawler on it uh, so sometimes that works just as well as a whole crawler here's a catfish that took a whole gob of crawlers on a single hook whirly flig of course they'll eat almost anything but that rig also works well for for night for um, walleyes you'd be surprised how many times walleye will like a gob of worms rather than a whole one rigged stringing out behind the, the lure here's a walleye that took a white whirly flag with a crawler rig on it. Looks like he got the top hook also and stripped the rest of the worm off. Now don't laugh at this, but this is what I call surf and surf. This is putting crawlers on top of a piece of perch meat or other meat. Uh, it's two different baits in one and you'd be amazed at how many times fish will hit this rather than hitting either one of the other baits individually. Minnows are great to use with flags. And since there's a wide range of sizes and types of minnows available and a wide range of flags, there's a lot of different options in the way you can hook them. This is a tail flag with a small minnow hooked sideways through the gills. Here's one with a larger minnow hooked with the head facing backwards and the hook wrapped around the spine. That's a very secure way of hooking the minnow. Here's the other option if you want the minnow facing forward hook the hook around the spine but with the hook pointing backwards and the minnow going forwards but notice that the hook point is exposed you always want that hook point exposed because a lot of your hookups will come on the strike if the hook is, is exposed here's another small minnow and a tail flag with the hook going up through the middle of the minnow's head 
And again, that's usually good enough to hook the fish if they strike it hard. And here's one with the hooks run through the eyes of the minnow. That also works well. And finally, another one with it hooks through the gills sideways. So there's a lot of ways of doing it. Uh, just experimenting around with A, what works best for the fish, and B, what works best for you. If you're using a big minnow, you can use a whole one, or you can cut them in half. Both work, but when you cut them in half, then you have the option uh, heads or tails. This is an example of uh, the head of a, of a medium-sized minnow hooked around through the gills and around the spine for a good secure hookup. And a very high percentage of time on these whirly flags, when a fish hits it, they will take the whole thing and, and get the hook very well. Cart meat works very well on flags. Uh, you don't need a huge piece, but you need enough to get their interest. And the one thing you'll notice is you do want the hook point exposed as you do on all the baits. And if you've rigged it properly with a hook point exposed and a nice piece of bait, uh, fish will get the hook a high percentage of the time right in the corner of the mouth when they chomp it. White bass works very well as a, as a flag adornment uh, on a big flag head. This is a small white bass on a blue and white gorilla flag. And uh, looks like uh, didn't have any trouble hooking that one. Sometimes you might want to cut the tail portion off of a small white bass. Uh, first of all, just to release more flavor in the water. Second of all, to make it a smaller target so the fish can gulp the whole thing on the bite. You can also use chunks of bait, again with the hook point well exposed and with plenty of scent coming out the top of the bottom. Mostly catfish and other fish you're going to be fishing with a white bass aren't really all that lure and hook conscious, so they'll gulp the whole thing. And this is what happens when uh, the hook point is properly exposed and the catfish gulp the whole thing. Bet that smarts. Perch meat is a great bait to use with flags. You can either cut it in strips or small chunks, just enough to decorate the hook and get the flavor out there and, and to give the fish something to chomp on. This is a perch that ate a chunk of perch meat. Uh, they're great at eating their own kind, so perch meat is always good to use for perch. If you're fishing on, through the ice using flags, you can use any of your standard baits like crawlers, perch meat, whatever, but you can also use the wax worms and mealworms that you use on any other jigs. Uh, the other thing is if you're a trout fisherman, don't be afraid to carry some bottles of power putty along and just put a little gob of that on a small jig. It'll work very well for trout. Now, there's a lot of different lures you can use to ad uh, adorn a jig, a flig, especially the, the whirly flags. So you can use plastic tubes, plastic shad, plastic twisters, and gulp minnows are great. Now, if you're using that plastic tube or any of the others, actually a one-inch piece of uh, nightcrawler or a little piece of perch meat can work very well. Now, the gulp minnows uh, are especially attractive on these whirly flags. Catch a lot of catfish on them. They love them. Uh, even if you're fishing at mid-depth, well above the bottom, the catfish will come up off the bottom to take it. Here's one with a different color whirly flag and a, and a white gulp minnow. And walleyes absolutely love the combination of the white whirly flag and the gulp minnow. Cut some beautiful, beautiful walleyes on that rig. Well, that pretty much covers the baits. Hopefully there's something in there that uh, will give you some new ideas. Okay, this is the final and most important section of this video. It brings together your own personal knowledge and skills and helps integrate them with the use of flags in your fishing arsenal. There are really a lot of options when it comes to flag presentations. They have to factor in all the variables of depth, speed, flag type, bait, species targeted, etc. Then you have to consider water temperature, clarity, water condition, weather conditions, other factors. Unfortunately, I can't provide a chart that shows exactly what to use and how to use it under any given set of conditions. But once you learn, at least know the options, 
you can try to reason out the best approach. The first presentation option in this list is drifting. Next is bottom bouncing, then trolling, then cast and retrieve, then bait soaking, then topwater presentations, and finally, even ice fishing. Now let's look at each of these uh, options individually. First is drifting. Uh, obviously this requires that you're afloat in a boat, kayak, or float tube, and you'll be relying on a general breeze to move you along at something about 0.5 miles an hour. If the breeze dies down, you might have to use the electric motor or oars, or uh, if you're in a float tube, you can even use fins. If the wind picks up, it makes you go even faster than about 0.5 miles an hour, then you'll be up into the bottom bouncing or even trolling. You can use any kind of flig you want for drifting, but if you're fishing small to medium-sized fish, a tail flig is usually a good choice. For larger fish, use larger baits, use larger flags, and uh, minnows or cut bait. For rigs, you probably want to use either a sliding sinker rig or one of the dropper options. Next on the list is cast and retrieve. Now this presentation option works either from the bank or from a float in a boat, uh, float tube, or a kayak. The variables again will be depth of the water, depth of the fish you're holding, the speed of the retrieve, and that's where the technique comes in. I fish mostly from a float tube and I usually fish uh, two rods. Sometimes I'm moving slowly along with either fin power or a low setting on the electric dragging one baited flig on one rod and uh, casting another uh, and retrieving it on the second rod. That's a good prospecting technique. Now when uh, using the cast and retrieve option, you need to decide where you want to fish in the water column and how fast you need to retrieve in order to fish that zone. Some fliggers simply make a long cast, let it settle to the bottom, and then reel back just fast enough to keep the flig uh, cruising by just off the bottom, kind of like bottom bouncing. Others will, after the set down, will lift the rod tip and then uh, start reeling the fast enough just to, to either bring the rig up through the water column or to keep it running at about the same depth and speed all the way back in on the retrieve. Uh, you have to experiment around, around sometimes, <clears throat> especially if you don't have uh, sonar in your, in your watercraft or otherwise don't know the, what depth the fish are cruising. Using a variable speed and depth on the retrieve will help you to find the active fish and clue you in on how to make your uh, future retrieves. Now you can fish almost any kind of flig with a retrieve, but if you're moving it at more than about 0.3 miles per hour, you'll do well with a whirly flig with the little uh, propeller blades. Those things spin at very slow speeds, and they're made for slow trolling up to fast retrieves. Otherwise, any tail flig or, or any of the other flig options will also work. Now, choose, choose a bait appropriate to the species you're fishing, and then uh, choose the size and shape of the flig that you're, you're, you want to use. Now, when it comes to rigs, there are some, several considerations. For retrieving on or near the bottom, the standard sliding sinker or dropper rigs will do fine. Or if you're, if you're retrieving, retrieving much faster and bringing it up through the water column, you might do better with, a, with some form of a trolling wig, which we will uh, picture later. The next presentation is bottom bouncing. Speed-wise, uh, it's the next step up from drifting. Uh, now, typically, if you'll be moving from at least 0.5 miles an hour to over 1 mile an hour, uh, that means you'll need some weight to keep your rig down with either a bottom bouncing rig or a three-way rig, which we'll show in a minute. You can use any kind of flig and bait for bottom bouncing, but if you're targeting walleyes, it's good to use like a whirly flig with a crawler rig and a whole night crawler. But a plain whirly flig with a piece of crawler, a uh, minnow or cut bait will also work well a lot of times too. Now if you're targeting catfish or other larger species, you can use a larger flag and a larger bait. Some folks are surprised at catching catfish with a fast presentation and a baited lure, but big flags and bait work very well for catfish and wipers and walleyes. There are two best bottom bouncing rigs that we mentioned in an earlier 
segment. <clears throat> the standard bottom bouncer rig is the, the three-way rig pictured on the bottom. Uh, this rig uses a heavier weight attached to a wire setup, and the weights usually run from one to three ounces, and, and they're good for keeping your rig right on the bottom when you're moving at higher speeds. Now, if you're bottom bouncing in shallower water, or moving a bit slower than the three-way rig with a lighter sinkle will do just fine. Next in the presentations is trolling. Now this usually means moving at least one to two miles an hour and running your baited flig rig somewhere above the bottom. Your sonar will tell you what depth the fish are holding and you should be trying to present your offerings either right in the fishy zone or slightly above it. Most species will rise up in the water column to take a lure, but very few will dive down to take something being dragged below them. Now, if you have downriggers or lead core line, you'll find it easier to make targeted depth presentations. Otherwise, you need to rig with some kind of trolling sinker and experiment with the depth and speed until you find the right combination. Let the fish tell you what they want. Now, you can troll with flags of just about any size and shape and design. But the whirly flags uh, that, that pull on a straight line and have the little spinner blades are usually the best for trolling. However, you, if you have a flag without uh, blades on them, you can string beads or blades if you want to uh, add extra attraction. You can also use just about any bait you want for the species you're targeting. Crawlers, minnows, cut baits all work well. Just be sure you rig them for minimum water resistance and minimize the twisting at trolling speeds. And as previously mentioned, you can also decorate your flags with artificials, plastics, or gold minnows. Both work very well. Some flakers remove the rear hook on a whirly flag and replace it with a fly, so they have a spinner-fly combination. And you can use a streamer, bugger pattern, any pattern you want, and then you can take it to the next extreme and even add a bit of uh, worm or fish flesh. The best rakes for trolling flags or the three pictured here. Now you can use any kind of dropper sinker two to five feet ahead of the flag, or you can use the all-purpose split shot, one, two, or three, or more, however many you need to get it down uh, to the depth you need at the speed you're trolling. Possibly the best option is to use a bead chain trolling sinker as we previously discussed. They're much better at controlling line twist, and they're available in many sizes. Again, anything from about a quarter ounce to one ounce is usually plenty. Now, using trolling sinkers is completely unnecessary, of course, if you have downriggers or lead core line. Now, if you're a hardcore cocaholic or a trout nut, <coughs> go ahead and put a dodger ahead of your trolling flig. Uh, flags are foam and they do float, so they really have a good wiggle when you when you fish one behind a dodger. I make flags in several coke or trout colors and uh, with a little whirly blades, but if you want to go the whole route, remove the single hook and replace it with a coke two hook rig. And then add a little squid and sweeten it up with your choice of gulp maggots and, or your favorite corn. Now the ne next option is bait soaking. This consists of putting your favorite bait on your favorite flig and then just chucking it out and letting it set while you wait for the fish to find it. This works well for bank dangling but you can also do it from an anchored boat, yak, or float tube. Of course if the breeze comes up uh, then you'll be drifting, bottom bouncing, or trolling. As you might expect, the best rigs for presenting little, for presenting uh, baits this way is with a sliding sinker or the dropper setups. But anything that presents your baited flag above the bottom and is acceptable to the fish is just fine. The bait, you'll be, the bait you use will be predicated upon the species you're targeting and the size and type of flag you're using. Smaller stuff for smaller fish, and bigger flags and bigger baits for catfish, wipers, or other larger species. Now the angler control technique here is what do you do after you've made your best cast? Do you just let it sit? or do you get creative? It can produce a lot more strikes if you occasionally give the rod tip a few wiggles to make that baited flake dance a little bit underwater instead of just sitting there. Or you can give the reel handle a few turns once in a while to move the flake into a different zone, hopefully with more active fish. Now another thing you need to decide uh, with this option is whether or not you want to hold your rod 
or you want to plop it up in a rod holder. If you're fishing in a school of active fish like white bass, perch, crappies, or whatever, it might pay to hold the rod if the bites are coming frequently. It's much easier to set the hook more quickly and uh, bring in more fish if you're holding the rod. But if you're fishing for infrequent biters, it's easier to prop your rod in a rod holder and relax in a comfy chair. However, if you're fishing for bigger and stronger fish, like catfish or wipers, make sure your rod holder is well anchored and strong and that you have the drag set loose on your reel. Otherwise, a sudden hard hit can break your line of your rod or take your rod out of the holder. That can make for a bad day. Believe it or not, you can actually catch fish by presenting flags on topwater. Flags float, and quite a few species actively feed on top. Uh, so, injured or dead minnows, assorted bugs, mice, frogs, all that stuff is on the menu on top. So any lure that at least roughly simulates a food item is likely to get an inquiry. Now if you like to fish topwater, uh, you can make some specialty flakes that uh, resemble beater, beetles, hoppers, bugs, mice, frogs. Uh, a lot of guys like to use little poppers. There are already several types of uh, and colors of flakes in white, gold, or silver that can satisfactorily represent a dead or dying minnow if you present those properly. Now, if you want to fish a flag on a spinning rod on top, use a light rod and, and a light line and you can usually cast them well enough. But if you can't cast far enough, then add a plastic bubble and fish it like you would a bubble in a fly rig. Of course, if you can swing a fly rod, that'll work even better. And if you're fishing a float from a boat, kayak, or float tube, you can just kind of drift along and, and uh, drag the flag behind you or, or let it drift in the breeze, wiggle and jiggle it once in a while to maybe stimulate an extra bit of attention. One tactic that's proven effective is to fish a white or silver whirly flag on top whenever you're trying to imitate a minnow. And then a little twitch on the rod tips make the propeller blades sputter and can sometimes induce, induce some memorable strikes. Good topwater presentations usually don't require bait to get bit. But adding a small piece of worm, fish flesh, or some other flavorful tidbit might uh, help seal the deal sometimes. Now last but not least is the option of ice fishing. Now most flag presentations are presented in a uh, horizontal move either along the bottom or somewhere above it. But with flags you'll be fishing vertically through the ice. That means you'll need to change your rigging. Now, a modified drop shot rig is the best way to fish flags beneath the ice. Here are a couple of diagrams. You can, the first diagram on the left shows how to rig two micro flags up above a weight on the bottom. Now, of course, you can use just a single flag, and that helps reduce the chances of hanging up on the ice with one flag if you're reeling in a fish on the other. Another option is you can tie the flig directly to the line, true drop shot style, but I prefer to use a short blood knot dropper set up about two or three inches of line between the main line and the flig. Since flags float, that allows them to wiggle and jiggle seductively uh, whenever you move the rod tip even a little bit. The second diagram shows substituting a weight for either a jigging spoon or a, uh, a larger jig head. Now that'll double your fish catching uh, options by giving the fish a chance, uh, choice between a larger, larger lure or a smaller one. And uh, you will catch fish on both on any given day. Your final choice will be what baits to use for fishing your flags on, uh, beneath the ice. And you can use any of the standard stuff, night crawlers, perch meat, perch eyes. You can use wax worms, or meal worms. They all work. However, if using the rig in the second program, uh, you might want to use a larger piece of bait on the bottom jig than on the top. Again, give them an option size-wise uh, and bait as well as lure. Well, this pretty much concludes the last segment of our video on the nuts and bolts of flig fishing, which is presentations. Now, I hope it's provided some useful information and helps stimulate your own thought processes on how you can use flags to catch more fish and have more fun. Good luck out there.